Dear participants, welcome to the medical webinar series presented to you by Global Healthcare Travel Council and Near East University. The webinar is broadcast live on the official YouTube channel and will be recorded for future use. My name is Abdullah Hamada and I will be moderating this session of the medical webinar series. In today's webinar, our speaker is Dr. Hatija Kemal Gonsal from Near East University. She will be delivering her presentation to us about cardio applications. And now I would like to invite Dr. Hatija Kemal Gonsal to the screen. Um, Doctor, hello. please introduce yourself to our audience and we are looking forward to hear your valuable presentation. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Hatice Kemal from uh, Near East University Cardiology. I will today try to um, give you more information on our clinic and what we do in cardiology. So, first of all, um, I will start to give some information about our hospital, then our department and what we do as um, invasive cardiologists. So Near East University Hospital is a big hospital located in Lefkosha, uh, North Cyprus. It has a 55,000 uh, meter square uh, area. We have 22 VIP suit rooms, 209 single rooms, eight operation theatres, 30 intensive care unit beds and 17 newborn ICU beds. Um, now you can see our cardiology doctors, we're a big team, we have professors, we have associate professors and a lot of consultant doctors. This is our cardiac surgeon group. Uh, we have, again, professors and uh, consultant cardiovascular surgeons, which are very experienced in their field. In our outpatient clinic, we have, uh, we have it from during the week, from eight o'clock in the morning until uh, 5 p.m. in the afternoon, we are able to do every kind of halter ECG monitoring, blood pressure halter monitoring, exercise test. We have a cardiac imaging room with echocardiography. We also are able to do pacemaker monitoring um, with various brands. We can do tilt test and also Ajmalin test for uh, arrhythmias. The cardiac imaging, we are very experienced in cardiac imaging. We can do 2D, 3D echocardiography invasive imaging, also non-invasive contrasect cardiography, transesophageal echo, strain echocardiography, and also intraoperative, usually in mitral valves and tricuspid valve operations. We also, I would like to mention that our uh, echocardiographic images are um, European Society of Cardiology board certified cardiologists. Now you can see what we can do with trans um trans thoracic echocardiography we are able to uh, we are able to monitor the heart um diagnose easily which is a non-invasive uh, modality and the patient has uh, no risk of radiation or anything or invasion so um, we can also, if we want to, we can also do strain echocardiography, which gives us more information about the deformation of the heart. And also, if we, uh, as you can see here uh, on my left-hand side, we can do 3D echocardiography, usually in operation to give a better view of the uh, cardiac anatomy to the surgeons. Again, uh, we are very, very experienced in mitral valve. With uh, mitral valve pathologies, we can uh, also we can correct them with invasive methods as cardiologists, or we can do minimal invasive operations with the cardiovascular surgeons. The key point for this is um, having a good image of the pathology and having a good uh, imaging cardiologist, which we are able to do in good uh, high standards. Uh, in our facility, we also have cardiac MRI. Uh, with the cardiac MRI, um, it, it's a much more advanced imaging modality than echocardiography. Uh, we are able to do uh, both normal anatomic standard um, cardiac imaging. We can do perfusion imaging and we can do also stress imaging to see if there's any ischemia in the heart and yet again i would like to mention that uh, our cardiologist for cmr is a uh, european heart society board certified which makes us a as a um, 
European known clinic. Now you can see some uh, examples of cardiac MRI images. We can uh, use it with almost any kind of pathology, but it's most useful to diagnose uh, myocardial problems and when the echocardiography is not sufficient enough we can use it to image the valves and give us a more extensive uh, information about the pathologies. You can see how it's done in real time. It usually takes about an hour to uh, image in each patient and uh, the reporting is done by uh, cardiologists in usually uh, 24 to 4 to 8 hours. Uh, coronary CT angiography, uh, it's called multi-slice CT scan. We usually recommend it to patients who have uh, intermediate or low risk for coronary artery disease. With this, um, it's we can distinct, uh, we can actually eliminate if there's severe coronary artery disease, or in patients with like bypass surgery or patients who do not want to have a coronary angiography normal, then we can do a CT scan to, um, to see the risk of the patient for atherosclerosis. It's performed by our radiologists. And again, we are high standard uh, clinic for this and we have very accurate results. Um, this is our cardiology inpatient wards. We have total of 19 rooms. Um, it consists of single rooms and VIP suit rooms. Each room has a telemetric monitoring system, which allows our nurses to monitor the and uh, vital findings from the desk. Uh, the coronary units and intensive care units we have uh, in this part, we have advanced monitoring units with full monitorization of the patient. We can do it either invasive or if we want to do it, we can do it non-invasive. Also, we have in for each bed, we have invasive and non-invasive mechanical ventilation. In the intensive care unit, we can do run-out replacement therapies like as CRRT or ultrafiltration or hemodialysis. We also have intraortic balloon pump for severe patients with um, advanced heart failure or cardiogenic shock. And also we have an ECMO in our unit. Uh, cardiac catheterization, we have a, a separated two labs for cardiac catheterization. We have a 24 hour, seven days available team. Uh, we have usually around 1,500 uh, procedures a year um, and our stenting rate is about 30%. Um, besides normal, like primary PCI or elective percutaneous interventions, we are able to do high uh, risk um, procedures. We can do bypass. Uh, angiography, we can do complex PCI like left main stenting. Also, other things that we do are peripheral angiography, also keratis angiography. And when needed with our cardiovascular team, we can do aortic aneurysm stent implantation, EVAR and TEVAR. These are what we do in routine daily basis. Uh, as everywhere, we use new generation drug eluting stents. Um, What's important with a cardiac uh, catheterization clinic is that to be able to have uh, high quality materials and to be uh, have uh, to be able to have uh, different kind of equipments. And we are we I can say that we are uh, lucky in this sense because um, we have a very advanced um, technical and non technical equipment which help us to give better treatment to our uh, patients. As I mentioned before, we can do complex PCR, which is left main artery stenting, and I can say that we are very experienced clinic and we get a lot of patient referrals for patients who do not want to have a bypass surgery, but instead they want to have stenting, which is a high risk procedure in these patients. As I said, we are experienced, we have um, up systems like intraortic balloon pop and ECMO if needed and also we, I can say that we have left ventricle assist device which we can use if needed in these high um, uh, high risk cases. Intravascular ultrasound IVUS is another thing that we do. It, it helps to determine the severity of lesion, luminaria, composition and size of the plug. Uh, we are lucky that we have it in the catheter lab and when we decide to use it for the patient, we can do it immediately when needed. FFR, which is fractional flow reverse reserve, is another modality that we use again in patients that we are not very uh, sure of the whether the 
lesion is very severe or intermediate. So with the FFR, we can identify if the lesion is hemodynamically relevant uh, in stable patients. And again, we have the, this in our clinic um, all the time. So whenever we need to do it, we can have it done without any delay. Transcatheter aortic valve replacement we, is routinely done in our clinic. We can do it in high uh, high risk patients and low risk patients. Uh, usually in high intermediate surgical risk elderly patients and patients with who have comorbidities. We have a very high success rate. Uh, we usually use self. Um, inflatable uh, valves, we prefer to use them, and our pacemaker uh, necessity is um, low after operation. This is where you can see the transcatheter aortic valve, uh, the valve preparation. This is the valve itself, and this is the, uh, the delivery system um, that we use. So in every week, almost we have patients for who are in for transaortic valve implantation as you can see here um, we can have a transesophageal echocardiography um, during the procedure but mostly we do not prefer to have it but if needed we can have it we can do it in valve in valve that means that if a patient had a valve operation or a valve intervention before and it's not working we can do a uh, again a valve uh, replacement with transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Uh, with the CT scan, we have to see the peripheral arteries and the abdominal and thoracic aorta to plan the treatment. And also, uh, we use special systems like proglide systems for the peripheral artery to close after the operation, so it's much more comfortable for the patients. Mitral clip implantation, it's a wide, uh, worldwide used technique for symptomatic moderate to severe functional mitral regurgitation or severe functional mitral regurgitation. We are capable of doing this with 3D echocardiographic uh, imaging. Um, the cardiac imaging guidance is very important before this procedure for choosing the patient. And I can say that we are very experienced. We have a good experience in uh, the timing and um, choosing suitable patients for this procedure. And also during the procedure, the key for a successful treatment is a good imaging, cardiac imaging with 3D echocardiography. What is done is with, uh, with this clip, the mitral valve clip, it repairs your damaged mitral valve without the need for open heart surgery. And I can say after the surgery, after the op uh, after this procedure, the hospitalization time is relatively very low, two to three days, and the patients can walk out of the hospital um, safely and healthily and go home. Pacemaker implantation, every kind of pacemaker, temporary pacemaker, permanent pacemakers, ICDs or cardiac resynchronization therapy or implantable loop recorders are available in our cl clinic and we implant these to patients with uh, routine daily routine basis. Um, also, if we have um, infective endocarditis or pacemaker um, infection, we are able to uh, remove the uh, completely the system, the pacemaker system, and with extraction and implant a new pacemaker to the patient. As you can see, we can, as I said, we can do lead extraction in infected patients. This is a very high risk procedure, mostly performed for infective pacemakers and also performed for damaged leads. Again, it's very important for the team to be experienced and have the appropriate equipment for this. And also it's important to have your cardiovascular surgery department to back up you. We can do defect closures, which are um, atrial septal defects or patent foramen ovale, and also ventricular septal defects. Again, we use um, transesophageal echocardiography imaging during the procedure. It's a very easy procedure and short procedure and usually patients are discharged in two days and they can return to their life in a very short time. 
Another thing that, uh, that we are doing in our clinic is actual appendage closure. As you can see, we are doing 3D imaging with these patients. With the 3D imaging, we help the actual interventional cardiologist to see the anatomy and be able to implant the device. Usually, we choose this in patients with high embolic risk and high bleeding risk. Aortic aneurysm interventions, this is something that we do with the cardiovascular surgeons, either abdominal aorta or the thoracic aorta. When needed, there's an aneurysm, we can implant a stent, which is called EVAR or TREVAR procedure. Electrophysiology study is another uh, department that we have in our clinic uh, with uh, arrhythmia, sup sup supraventricular tachycardia, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation and Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, we are able to, we have creoablation, we have CARTO, 3D CARTO ablation, or directly RF radio, radio frequency ablation for patients who uh, attend with these kind of arrhythmias. Uh, we see here that we're doing the electrophysiologic study and then there's a radio frequency ablation done to check whether the patient has arrhythmia. We also, in our cardiology clinic, we have a special heart failure clinic. We have advanced heart failure follow-up for these patients. We do six-minute walking tests. We are, I can say that we are a clinic and a hospital with cardiac transplantation license, and we do device surgery as heart mate and heart surgeries. In our island, we, have, we are the only clinic who follows uh, these kind of patients, both from the north and uh, from the south, Cyprus, we are uh, the only clinic to be able to follow up patients with left ventricular assist device and patients who need heart transplantation. So this is all that I can uh, explain about our clinic. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam, for sharing the value of the insights about this uh, county applications. I'm sure our audience enjoyed and benefited from the information you have provided. We can take questions from the audience if we have any. If there is any questions, if there are not any questions, then I would like to finish this session by thanking you again, Dr. DJ Kamal Gonsa for your contribution. Thank Madam, it was lovely to be here with you today. Thank you again for very much for much for your valuable contributions to our medical webinar series. Many thanks for your participation today and we wish to meet you in upcoming events as well. Until then I wish you good and healthy days. Thank you very much for inviting me. Hayat hızla akıyor ve biz bu hızı seviyoruz. Her güne heyecanla başlıyor, her anı doya doya yaşıyoruz. İlk günkü heyecanımızla yılları aşıyoruz. Zaman akarken biz de kendimizi arıyoruz. Heyecanla, merakla. Sen de kendini mi arıyorsun? O zaman zamana yetiş. Bu sadece kendini bulmakla ilgili değil. Asıl heyecan kendini yaratmakta. Bir şeyler mi yaratmak istiyorsun? Mükemmel! Metali işlemeyi, bir bina yapmayı, bir iş kurmayı, hatta bir şehir kurmayı öğren. Hayat kurtarmak, teknoloji geliştirmek, üretmek hepsi burada. Ve burada tüm deneyimler profesyonellerle yan yana. Ancak hızlı ilerlemeliyiz. Çünkü bugün şimdi gerçekleşiyor ve yarın çok yakın. Hayatta öne geçmek istiyorsan önce zamanın önüne geçeceksin. Hep ileri gideceksin. Bu Doktor Suat İrfan Gülser. Tanıyor musun? Onun da söylediği gibi. Üniversiteler toplumların dokuma tezgahıdır. Toplumları geliştirir, dönüştürür ve gelişmesini sağlar. O burayı bugünden yarına hazırlamak için kurdu. Senin için, ileriye gitmek için. Yana ya da geriye değil. Sadece ileri. Çünkü gelecek çok yakın. Hadi harekete geç. Fikirlerin ne kadar ileride olursa yarına o kadar yaklaşırsın. Yanındakileri de geleceğe taşırsın. Bu senin geleceğin, senin fırsatın şimdi. Hadi yarın yakın. Hepimizi ileriye götür.